Gotta freaking broaden the demographic, man. Gotta review some anime. Some freaking anime. Gotta, gotta churn out some reviews for the weeaboos. Okay, um... I think this is the first time I'm reviewing a anime movie on this channel. I'm not sure if I've already done one. Then screw this, but still. Uh... My relationship with anime, let's just start with that. My relationship with anime has always been a very natural one. Because, you know, Korea is basically right next to Japan. Although there is a sea between it. There is still basically right next to Japan. So, the shows that are on our television sets are usually Japanese anime. Because Korean animation has not gone that far. So, obviously, while growing up, I've seen... Freaking Bleach, um, Death Note, One Piece, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, and of course the kids' favorites, Digimon and Pokemon. So, and of course Full Metal Alchemist and Detective, Detective Conan and all that good stuff. But as I grew up, as I stopped watching TV overall, I never really was into anime after that. Like, the only anime that I watched the only series that i watched was cowboy bebop and that was about it the, the rest is history i don't really remember a lot of it i do remember the full metal alchemist a lot because that's just a genuinely good show um but like i said when it comes to series and tv shows i'm not big on an anime films on the other hand are different because i'm a film buff and anime movies are just basically animated movies so i just watch them and so you know, Ghibli movies, freaking um, films like Summer Wars, or, you know, all those anime movies I'm definitely into. I like the style. I still like the way it depicts nature. Um, the freaking watercolors are absolutely beautiful still. So, basically, I still kind of like anime movies. And Perfect Blue was one of those movies that I've heard a while back... Mostly because a lot of people were talking about how Black Swan was inspired by this, and having seen it, I can see why. But let's get into the review. Let's get into the review. It's, it's, we've already wasted two and a half minutes, so yeah, let's get into the review. Obviously, if you don't know what the movie's about, it's basically this pop idol trying to become an actress, and she's having this paranoia about somebody killing the people she's associated with. She's seeing weird illusions, and she's basically becoming... She feels like she's going crazy. That's basically the plot. Now, obviously, the main factor of the film is basically paranoia. Paranoia about murders, um, imaginary entities, about herself, about anxieties, about public images. And the way the film really portrays this paranoia is definitely effective. There's a reason why people are talking about this movie. Um, I love the intercuts of relating dialogue. They're, like, there's this one scene where she's trying to go into her apartment, and it's edited right next to the scene where a fan gives her a fan mail, right, like, outside of her limousine, and the fan says, I see you in, like, I, I'm, I'm watching you all the time. I see you in your room. And then it cuts back to her trying to open her apartment. So it just intercuts these relating dialogues to kind of emphasize the paranoia. It also shows the idea of duality and how everything is not what it seems. Like, there's this great, like, throughout the film, you might notice that when a character goes in, inside somewhere, it usually ends up with... Right, ends up right next to the scene where she's going out somewhere when a character goes towards the screen the next scene would be her in a different situation going away from the screen like that duality stays there and it, you can see it frequently throughout the movie so the paranoia kind of emphasizes yeah the, the paranoia is emphasized yet again freaking grammar shit man um there's a lot of silence in this movie as well which is obviously very effective for paranoia but just mere silence doesn't really work that well when it comes to the long term. Um, what makes the silence work is what comes right after, because there's always this contrasting noise that suddenly comes in to emphasize the horror element of the movie. And when there's no silence, there is this great soundtrack of creepy industrial music, which, let's face it, ja Japan, if anything, is really, really, really good at making creepy, noise rock, and industrial music, so props to them. Um, 
And obviously, all of this won't work if we don't care for the main character, but obviously we do, because she's definitely described as this, as this ambitious yet frustrated character. And we also see that she's very human, because there's this subtle envy and worry, worrisome elements going on with her, because there's this great scene where, um, because she was in a little group called Cham, and she was the third member of the group, and so the rest of the members are now a duo. And you, there's this great scene where she, like, she's gonna be over here, and she's drinking some tea, and over here, like, in the background, you can see the duo talking about their success. And you can, when those scenes basically describe this, this, the inner worry, worrying, worryings, uh, and the envy that she kind of feels towards the success of her peers. Um, there's also, obviously, great amount of anxiety and pressure. Uh, most of the great scenes come from um, scenes where you hear the staff, kind of, the staff of the drama or the movie she's filming, kind of gossip, gossiping about her. There's, th there's other great scenes where you see, like, random people in magazine shops talking about her, like, basically gossiping about celebrity celebrities, and... All those things kind of emphasize the amount of pressure she has and why she need why why she why she breaks down sometimes, and so it all kind of leads up to this great breakdown scene after she shoots her rape scene for a drama series, and she just comes home. She basically makes a mess around her apartment, and she just says, "Of course I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to like not annoy and everybody else, and just wanted to be in the fucking actress and." You see how much this is affecting her, and it becomes extremely relatable and, um, to a certain extent, very sympathetic. And obviously, because of all of that, it does lead to um, talking about celebrity culture and how we're too obsessed with it and how it kind of leads into pressure and dis distorted images of celebrities and how in this in this film, basically, how it basically gets to your mind. And that's really where the best part of the movie kind of comes in. The film, as it goes towards the ending, is genuinely confusing. Like, the constant dream intercuts, and the way the TV show kind of resembles her own life, it becomes so confusing, and so weird, and so schizophrenic that... It kind of becomes a um, double-edged sword, and this is where we go into the flaws. Because there are a couple flaws that I kind of want to pick out. Um, but let's get the let's get the good stuff out of the way. So obviously, it becomes extremely confusing, and you kind of feel like the character. You don't know what's going on, and so when the ending comes, it's such a moment of clarity, and it's such a creepy ending. And it's such, and it's an ending that basically sums up every single thing that I've talked about so far about the film. It's such a good ending, and it's easily the scariest part of the movie that it does leave you kind of stunned. It is, it's easily one of the best endings I've seen in any anime movie. Um, so yeah, but let's get into the flaws because there are a few. Like I said, it does get schizophrenic. Unfortunately, this does make the feel film feel kind of unbalanced and kind of unfocused that might have been the intention but it's done in a very haphazard way like i get their intention it's just not done correctly or not done extremely well or extremely carefully um it could have been more you know flowing that's just what i'm saying also outside the main character and this other character that i'm not going to mention because it's basically going to ruin this film for you um Outside of these two characters, the rest of the characters just feel like tools. Like, they're not interesting at all. They're, there's no personality behind any of the faces. It's just, They all just feel like set pieces outside of the main characters. And it, uh, and when I say main character, characters, I'm just talking about two people. So, obviously, it gets frustrating. But overall, if you want to see some pretty screwed up anime... This is worth it. I can easily see. I can easily see why people call this a cult classic, and def definitely a classic among anime movies. So yeah, um, three point five out of four, easily. It's really good. Go watch it. God damn it. Um, yeah, Perfect Blue, three point five out of four. Bye.